a warehouse of 600 feet by 600 feet full of COVID-19 products was discovered today. Look at people struggling to pass. This, pro this incident has been going on since 7 a.m. As I speak with you, sources say the warehouse has not gone off. Palliative that we're supposed to be giving to people during the COVID-19 period was hidden away in, in a warehouse, and Nigerians were dying of hunger and starvation. Look at this man struggling to survive. Look at him. Something, something that is supposed to be brought to his where to his home. Look at it. You mean? Ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, 26th of October, 2020, and I'm recording live. I'm coming to you live from Awalada. This is what is happening here. I am recording live. Can you see what's going on here? A woman is down now, like she's dead. She's dead. A woman is dead now. This is Kwagwalada, Abuja, Nigeria, F-City. Can you see this? I left my work to see this. This is palliative warehouse. I don't know what they call this, but it is happening live and direct from Kwagwalada, Abuja. Can you see what's going on? Can you see the crowd? Even just know this one. This is Wawalada, as in, I, 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 I can't say anything for now. I dare not go in there, we die there. No, 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 I dare not. Live from Wawalada, Wawalada. Live from Wawalada, this is my face. Live from. Good morning and welcome to today's news from Vanguard Life. My name is Dabdola Omushake and now with my co-host Precious Chukudu and of course we will read and analyze the front pages of the stories uh, with Holmes and also uh, of course there will be a guest to analyze uh, the stories later uh, while joining us um, during the course of the show. But of course uh, we've had many things going on and that's mainly based on the hashtag MSAS protests and violence you know, in many parts of the cities, Nigeria and the absence of the police. So it's really worrying to many people and you know when you're walking on the street how do you feel now if you see it and all that? Uh, to an extent it's still, everybody still needs to be very careful of how they leave their house and you know get back. Especially because we still have to go out within the curfew period because uh, now that you know, Lagos State Government has increased it to like 8 p.m., you know, whatever you're going to do has to be within that time so you can get back up. Because, you know, you really can't tell what's going on outside. I, I got an information from someone who stays somewhere around Nigeria. He was saying that uh, there was, you know, issues of reported like violence and shootings around those areas. So you can imagine that it's still something, something that everybody still needs to, you know, worry about, worry about basically. Okay, um, let's start with the front page of uh, the papers, and we're starting with that of Vanguard. And here we have Gardner's ministers paid blames over looted palliatives. Uh, palliatives are distributed in the Shokoto delayed at minister's request, and that's coming from uh, from Notambua. And Shokoto's governor's claim on true, says source in humanitarian ministry, no reason to hold uh, palliatives, and that's coming from Odo government. Car COVID explains delay in distribution of palliatives. ICPC to investigate alleged ordering of palliatives. Uh, you can see that on page five. Uh, moving on to other stories above the nameplate. On page seven, we have presidency worries over police absence as street violence escalates. After NSAS crisis, Lagos government invited us to intervene, and that's coming from Army. Now you can see that on page eight, and our other stories below the nameplate. Um, on page 23, we have Mayhem absent as a Southwest uh, Senators lobby federal government's financial support for Lagos. Buari appoint Professor uh, Yakubu as INEC chairman. And on page 7, we have Afeni Ferry NEP uh, disagree over alleged attack on Nottingham in South. And uh, lastly, on the front page of Vanguard, we have 10 new airports coming soon. 
that's coming from federal government and you can see it on page 13 and from the front page of Bangladesh, we move straight to the punch newspaper and on the punch newspaper we have main headline outrage over ig's failure to stop lutins corruptions and amongst others uh, the writer says hoodlums harass lagos abuja residents as police fail to return to streets uh, soldiers battle fct looters miscreants clash in lagos attack brt buses uh, IG all heads of security, uh, all heads of security agency should face ICC prosecution, says group. And uh, Buhari appoints a Yakubu as INEC chairman. You can see that on page six and on page uh, twenty-nine. Volume of beneficiaries responsible for stagger the palliative distribution. Uh, that's car COVID. And uh, stories beneath we have a. Uh, Landlord, two other dies in Oyo flood. Uh, Lekki shootings. Uh, Evans, ex lawyer, sues Buhari. Buratai demands 10 billion naira for victims. Also, uh, Solo sounds stuffed over inter tribal clashes of violence in Lagos. And away from the punch newspaper, we move straight to this day newspaper. And on the front page of this day newspaper, we have a uh, despite Solo's denier. Army insists the Lagos, the Lagos government requested troops deployment. Uh, the writer, we have uh, denied shooting civilians. Governors are uh, never denied inviting soldiers, claims aid. And police command count losses, say six uh, personnel killed, 38 injured, 71 false vehicles, uh, 62 as a beta destroyed. And 520, 520 suspects arrested for rioting. And Southwest governors. Uh, Southwest senators to lobby federal government to compensate Lagos. Uh, you can see that on the front page and it continues on page 9. Uh, still on page 9, we have a federal government insist on regulating social media. And uh, also on page 5, an historic move, uh, Buari nominates Yakubu for second term. Uh, the Economist endorses Okonjo Iwela to lead uh, WTO. And lastly, on the front page of these days, we have uh, Mefele. Banks the bust, uh, this bust, uh, 2.32 trillion naira loans with movable uh, collaterals, a CJN6 speedy dispensation of justice in commercial transaction. And from this, they will move straight to the Guardian. And on the Guardian, we have main headlines on un unemployment spikes as a manufacturing outlook dims. And the writer says, uh, expert predicts 50 percent unemployment rates rise. Uh, manufacturers lament looted warehouses. Uh, expect longer recessions, economists warns, and the NMPC allays fears as fuel scarcities of faces in Abuja. Others, you can see that on page, two, on page three, and on page three, still Senate panel suspend budget se se session over attacks. And on page eight, six policemen, four civilians killed in Lagos' bloody week of violence. On page 13, uh, uh 13 die in Kaduna. A uh, canoe road accident and uh, stories we need. We have a uh, national carrier will take uh, will take off uh, 2021, says uh, federal government. And that's all we can take on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. And that's all we can take on the front pages of the papers this morning. Uh, we're going on a short break and when we come back, uh, we have a guest who will be joining us via Zoom as he is a person in the author that you're acting to be. I will be joining to analyze the stories and also what is going on around the world. Uh, stay with us, we'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, 26th of October, 2020, and I'm recording live. I'm coming to you live from Awalada. This is what is happening here. I am recording live. Can you see what's going on here? A woman is down now, like she's dead. She's dead. A woman is dead now. This is Awalada, Abuja, Nigeria, FCT. Can you see this? I left my work to see this. This is palliative warehouse. I don't know what they call this, but it is happening live and direct from Gwagwalada, Abuja. Can you see what's going on? Can you see the crowd? Even just know this one. This is Gwagwalada, as in, I, 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 I can't say anything for now. I dare not go in there, we die there. No, 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 I dare not. Live from Gwagwalada, Gwagwalada. Live from Gwagwalada, this is my face. Live from Gwagwalada, 
I'm climbing on pole to, to show this to everyone. I'm climbing on pole on pole to show this. I left my work to, to show this to everybody. Live from Kagwalaja. This is my own property. It's actually very our food plenty, okay. dear. Oh. Plenty, plenty. plenty, food plenty. Our food plenty for dear. A warehouse of 600 feet by 600 feet, full of COVID-19 products, was discovered today. Look at people struggling to pass. This, pro this. Incidents have been going on since 7 a.m. As I speak with you, sources say the warehouse has not gone off. Palliative that was supposed to be given to people during the COVID-19 period was hidden away in, in a warehouse, and Nigerians were dying of hunger and starvation. Look at this man struggling to survive. Can you imagine? Look at him. Something, something that is supposed to be brought to his where to his home. Look at it. You mean? Can you imagine? Nigeria has more than enough. The, has more than enough. The Navy has collected their own. The armies have put their truck, collected their own. Immigration, custom, last man. And the warehouse has not gone half. The warehouse has not gone half. The warehouse has not gone half. Palliative for the poor. Stored away. This is October 20, 20. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, uh, this is Today in the News of Manga Life. My name is Damola Kumshakin, and I'll be with my co-host, Precious Chukudu. And of course, uh, we've uh, reviewed the front pages of some of the papers. And now this is the analysis segment where our guest will be joining us via Zoom. And this is the person of Dario Akintobi, the publisher of Ibukoji Today. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Damilola. Good morning, Precious. It's always a delight to be with you. Likewise, um, yes. Uh, thanks for joining us. Okay, so um, let's uh, talk about what is still going on, and that's uh, the looting of the palliatives. And now we have uh, many Nigerians are still curious. They still want to know why these uh, palliatives, you know, are being ordered by some of the uh, governors. But it seems the uh, governor of uh, Shokoto, you know, he came out to say uh, uh, the reason why they still uh, delayed you know, with the distribution of the uh, palliatives was due to the request by the minister, that's uh, Minister uh, Sadiq, saying that, um, you know, they, they needed to delay it. And also we had uh, several governors also coming out to say, like Governor of Lagos State saying that uh, it was as a result of uh, the end SARS protest. And then uh, Governor's Forum saying that no, nobody told them to delay it. Now, um, uh, what I just want to ask you is, uh, what do you think of this uh, back and forth from the governors? And uh, who are we to believe? It's, it's a bit difficult to know to believe at this moment. The facts on ground are that the palliatives were not distributed according to uh, need and urgency. They were ordered, uh, whether for distribution purposes, whether for logistics purposes, uh, whether based on uh, the, the NSAR strike. What we know, the facts on ground, is that the palliatives were, were stored somewhere. They were not distributed as needed. And the question now arises, why? Why? Um, I've heard various reasons. I don't want to call them excuses, but I've heard a wide variety of reasons, including the fact that um, for logistics purposes, they were first stored in one large warehouse for onward distribution to each individual state. I've also heard uh, excuses that some items were not ready yet and they didn't want to have to do the distribution twice. So they were waiting for other items to be included in what was already in the warehouses. But the point is, from a timing perspective, it doesn't look very good for the authorities because at the end of the day, uh, we've discovered all these. Uh, and the funny thing is, it's not just in one state. So it seems to be a pattern. There are palliative stored in warehouses everywhere across the country. So we have to ask ourselves why, what was the reasoning behind this? Especially at a time when 
due to COVID, there was a lot of uh, dislocation, a lot of disruption. People were not able to go to work as required. People were not able to earn their daily keep. Uh, salaries were delayed or, or eliminated completely. So there was a real need for the palliatives in the last several months. People were actually uh, um, hungry. People were actually in need. If that was the situation, why then should they be in a warehouse? All the reasons to me, all the excuses given don't add up. Okay, but you know, um, um, according to uh, some of the things that we've heard now, that uh, this came in um, uh, early this month, that's the palliatives came to the states um, early this month, uh, got to the states rather. And, um, you know, after some of them have received it, some governors said they are not yet to, you know, get their own completely, just like you said now. Now, the, the question is now, many Nigerians said they are not really aware of these uh, palliatives entering the states. And also, Lagos that have said, uh, you know, they've started their distribution. We have many people saying that they've not heard anything. And how is this process going? What happens? And how do you determine who are you going to give it to? So now I want to ask you, don't you think this thing all started as a result of a lack of communication and non-transparency from, you know, the state government? Well, let, let's not be in a hurry to indict anybody yet because we don't really know the facts. All we know is that, yes, there are palliatives in one place and, yes, there are hungry people someplace else. And the two of them were supposed to meet. The palliatives were supposed to meet with the people who needed them and that did not happen. There could be a myriad of reasons as to why that didn't happen. Obviously, uh, there's probably some logistics uh, challenges. There also could be ulterior motives. There could be uh, the fact that, uh, as is being speculated, that they were being hoarded so they could be re sold and money is pocketed. We do not know. I'm investigating, I'm unraveling. I don't doubt that there could be a bit of a combination of both, probably logistics and distribution challenges, because if you think about it, it's really a large scale operation in terms of collecting all these things, uh, centralizing them, and then onward distribution out to the various states. It's a major logistical challenge, something that you would expect an experienced logistics company like a, a UPS or a Red Star or a DHL to have been called in to help handle this kind of distribution. It's not something that inexperienced people can do. And remember, we've not really had a situation like this before where we've had to undertake such a challenging, uh, a massive uh, um, distribution process. Remember, the items just had to come in, they had to be collected, collated, documented. Then you now have to determine where they are going, who is getting it. Damilola, you asked a question. You said, what criteria are they using to determine who gets it? Very important question. Is it about who has a, 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 a party card? for the party in power in the state? Is it about uh, the elderly? Is it, how do you determine who qualifies? What criteria do you use to determine who gets it? Is there bias? Is there preferential treatment? Is it the friends of the, of the government in power that are prioritized to receive? Is it people that don't even need it? Is it people who are above uh, the poverty line, who can afford to look after themselves, who are the ones getting it? These are the questions that need to be answered. And I think, that as the days go on and investigations commence and questions start to be asked and probes start to be undertaken, the truth will eventually come out. The most, the saddest part about it all, those who needed it didn't get it when they needed it. It's a shame that it's something that air like air SARS that is now exposing the fact that all of these food items that could have gone to serving the populace. I, and I, I put it to you this way, even though the rioting and the pillaging and the looting of commercial establishments has abated. The fact that palliative warehouses are now under uh, threat and under attack, it goes to show the degree of hunger in the country. People no longer care about generators and all these other consumer goods. People are looking for food. It means that this thing they've been saying that there's hunger in the land is real. There is some guy in the land, if you see, degree of desperation to get into these uh, palliative warehouses. It just confirms that there is hunger in the land. All right, uh, let's look at uh, this, the statement that was coming from uh, the Kogi state governor, that's uh, Yahaya Bello. And then he said that the hashtag NSAS protest was uh, 
politically motivated. Now, his reason basically is that uh, the protesters had their demands and uh, they related it to the, the government. And the government said, okay, you know, we're going to attend to these demands. Uh, we want you to leave the street and allow us to our job. Now, he, the fact that he mentioned that he had a political undertone is what I want us to talk about. What's your take on that? Everything has a political undertone. What does pol what does politics mean? What does political engagement mean? What the, 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 the political industry simply relates to how uh, government and the governed interrelate with each other. So everything has a political undertone. Politics is about sharing of resources. Politics is about sharing of political offices. Politics is about meeting the demands of people. So yes, of course, there was a political undertone to the NSARS riot with a focus on specific issues. But people going to protest to demand better conditions of living, starting from police brutality down, is political by its very nature. So um, that may not have been what the governor yet higher meant. I think maybe what he was referring to was an underlying hidden agenda by certain political forces. But I don't think any of us has adequate insider information. He may know some things we don't know, but I don't think that we can categorically say it was so. I see some things that look a bit funny it to do with the NSAS protest. Despite the fact that they didn't have any specific leaders, I think there had to have been some hand behind the scenes that was directing things. It was too organized to not have been organized. I don't think different actors working randomly could have coalesced into such a synchronized operation. So I do believe that there were some behind the scenes players who were actually uh, directing affairs. If that's what the governor means by political undertones, okay. the question we should now ask is what is the motive behind whoever was directing the affairs. Okay, well, why he basically mentioned the whole political undertone is the fact that, you know, there are people who are political office holders who basically like the fact that uh, this is a movement without no leader and uh, they can use that as an opportunity to, you know, erupt violence. And also, you mentioned the fact that uh, the NSAS protests uh, basically didn't have uh, leaders, but there were some like functional groups. For example, the Feminist Coalition, uh, what they were basically in charge of was uh, the donations that were given across the globe, and uh, they were operating a form of transparency type of, uh, of, of, of things that they would, you know, every money they would get, they would upload it and post for people to see that this is what is coming in and what is basically uh, going out. Now, you mentioned also that uh, you saw that there were a lot of things that, were, that was really wrong with the protest. Now, uh, because now that he has said that he has a political undertone, I'd like you to, uh, from your own angle, what exactly do you think that the protest was really lacking? I, I think, well, well, what was the protest lacking? The protest was lacking uh, an end goal in mind, which has truncated the process, unfortunately. Look at where are we today? What is the final outcome of NSAS protest today? One way or another, the, the, the protests have ended prematurely. The protests have ended without a resolution, without a firm resolution of the demands. Because remember, the initial five uh, uh, requests were granted by the government. Government said, these five things you've asked us to do, we will do them. That did not end the protests. The people said, do them, let us see. And then do additional things. We don't want this what? We don't want this, we don't want this, we don't want this. So what I'm saying is this. The protests did not achieve whatever they stood to achieve before it was truncated simply because violence and an uprising came out of it. So, how have we benefited is my question. How has it achieved its original objective if, through no fault of anybody, it got derailed? So, if there were political undertones, and there's political undertones in everything, who stood to gain is what we should ask ourselves. Who stood to gain by the violence? Who stood to gain by even um, the protests itself when they were not violent? Remember, the protests, this 
disrupted the working everyday life of regular Nigerians. The Lekki toll gate was blocked. People couldn't go to work and come back. Who benefited from that? Who benefited from the disruption of gay life in the way we know it uh, 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 with before even violence crept in? Now, look at the other side. Who stood to gain from the violence that truncated uh, uh, um, um, the peaceful protests? These are the kind of things we need to begin to examine before we can begin to pinpoint and say, okay, this political entity had a reason to do it. Some people are talking about it was geared towards 2023 elections. I mean, that could be and might not be. We don't know. We are not insiders who are exposed to the kind of information, but there are some political strategists who can join dots together where laymen like you and me can't see those dots because they are privy to insider information. Oh, so and so person has political ambition for 2023. So it benefits him to make the present government look bad. Oh, there are all kinds of scenarios we can conjecture, but we don't really know. Okay, so um, it seems now this protest now uh, it's like it has really resulted into many things like that of violence and now i uh, was talking about the policemen not uh, being on the streets of uh, many uh, many cities many states in nigeria right now uh due to i don't know whether due to their fear of life but uh the Spectre general police gave a directive that uh, uh, the police should return back uh, you know to the streets but right now it seems they've not uh, really uh, adhered to this directive despite violence uh, engulfing most uh, a part of the country. What do you have to say about this? Why do you think they've not listened to the directive of the Inspector General of Police? It's, it's really ironic that we started out complaining about police brutality, that we don't want it anymore, and now we've ended up with zero policing. So we go from one extreme to the next. They are too brutal and too violent. Now to, there's none of them anywhere to be found. I drove up and down the streets of Lagos yesterday. I didn't find one single authority figure in uniform on the streets. No police, no LASMA, even the Lagos State uh, Neighborhood Safety Watch, Neighborhood Safety Corps, that ride bicycles around there, they were nowhere to be found. So all of a sudden, what we brought upon ourselves is a situation where we have zero policing. We were complaining about police brutality. Now we've led ourselves into a situation where the police are afraid because how many of their police stations got raised? How many weapons got uh, uh, looted and, and pilloried? How many? Um, I mean, I mean, how many uniforms got stolen? So you don't know who is a policeman now. You don't know whose hands the weapons are in. You don't know uh, what danger or threat is lurking out there against us today. So the police probably are, are a bit afraid, and they probably need some reassurance. They probably need. It's, it's easy for the IG to sit in his office in Abuja and say, go back uh, out there and police, do the policing. But they know that the miscreants have weapons. They are, the police weapons are in the hands of the miscreants. So the police are probably a bit gun shy at the moment, and they probably need some kind of reinforcement, some kind of uh, inspiration, motivational talk, some kind of, of uh, remuneration. I'll give you an example. In the community where I live, uh, the police barricaded themselves here for three days during uh, uh, the initial rioting and when police stations were being sacked everywhere. And the police here were ready to defend their territory and defend the community. But the DPO told me that they have no budget, that they've been sleeping in the police station for three days straight, not going home. Probably some of them out of fear, probably some of them out of really wanting to defend their territory. But for three days they couldn't go home. How did they feed? How did they communicate? How did they uh, 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 up their morale? So it fell on me as a local community publisher to rally around people in the community to provide welfare for the police. We had to feed them for those three days because it's not in their budget to be fed in the station. They go home and eat at home. But for those three days, they were stuck in the station. So we, the community, had to come to their aid and come to their rescue so that they are well enough nourished, well enough fed, and have enough energy be able to protect us. Don't blame them. I blame us because we're missing at the moment. Yes, we started out fighting for a reduction in the degree of their brutality. We went overboard and pushed ourselves into a circumstance of zero policing. Zero policing now is more dangerous than police brutality, I'm sorry to say, mm -hmm. because all of a sudden now 
were exposed to the risk of more than police brutality, but miscreant brutality, which I tell you has no end and no control and no recourse. Okay. So we set ourselves on a relatively dangerous path here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's been lovely having you with us um, you know, today on the program. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, and that's all we have for you on Today in the News. You can always like and follow us on our social media platforms that are showing you on your screen or visit our website, www.vanguardngr.com to get more of our top stories. It's bye from me, Damlola Okushaki, on Today in the News. I'm my co-host, Krasha Shichifudi. Thank you for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, 26th of October, 2020, and I'm recording live. I'm coming to you live from Awalada. This is what is happening here. I am recording live. Can you see what's going on here? A woman is down now, like she's dead. She's dead. A woman is dead now. This is Awalada, Abuja, Nigeria, FCT. Can you see this? I left my work to see this. This is palliative warehouse. I don't know what they call this, but it is happening live and direct from Gwagwalada, Abuja. Can you see what's going on? Can you see the crowd? Even just know this one. This is Gwagwalada, as in, I, 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 I can't say anything for now. I dare not go in there. Our food plenty, food plenty, 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 plenty. Food plenty. Our food plenty for dear. A warehouse of 600 feet by 600 feet, full of COVID-19 products, was discovered today. Look at people struggling to pass. This pro this. Incidents have been going on since 7 a.m. As I speak with you, sources say the warehouse has not gone off. Palliative that was supposed to be given to people during the COVID-19 period was hidden away in, in a warehouse, and Nigerians were dying of hunger and starvation. Look at this man struggling to survive. Yes, can you imagine? Look at him. Something, something that is supposed to be brought to his where to his home. This thing for the past two hours. Look at it. You mean? Can you imagine? Nigeria has more than enough. The Nigeria has more than enough. The Navy has collected their own. The Army.